Hello everyone, my name is Relax and Panic and this is another reaction to Overlord. It is season 3 episode 4 and you know what to do as always just go down into my descriptions you will find a link replace the circumflex dot parts with real dots and enjoy the reaction. Once you've done come back here and hear me out about this episode. So see you soon. For those that came back well come back. Now there was a great little episode, right? It was, um, as I already said, a little bit of a filler. So uh, I think it did not bring the main narrative a long way forward. Um, but it was interesting to see some character interactions, uh, to hear some of the backgrounds, which all of this is about. And uh, we finally met the giant of the East and the snake. Um, so, well, I mean, I did... In, in the end, we could not expect something very powerful because they were meant to have like an equal level um, to balance with Hamuske, who, as we know, was dominated by Lord Eins pretty easily. Um, but still, it's um, for the people living in this world, those are possibly very, very dangerous enemies. Um, I mean, the ogres and trolls follow them, so it's fitting. Um, so we have one melee troll. I am not sure if he's still alive. I mean, he was, yes. But the uh, thought of Lorraine's about doing or creating um, troll zombies kind of gives me the implication it might be that he will not survive very long. Um, I mean, he really stood against him all the time and he seems to be not the cleverest one. He did not get how powerful Lord Eins is, while the snake, uh, the naga, did get it more neither instantly. I mean, just the fact that he can th see through invisibility already gave him a clue. Okay, this is not a normal undead. He is way more powerful. This is an ability you don't acquire easily. And, um, well, then you couldn't hit him. So it's very, uh, in the meaning, you did not do any damage to Lord Oinz. So it was pretty clear he's possibly a high level um, mage with some kind of absorption, powerful armor, or spell, whatever. So, um, May, even if he would have come extremely prepared, that means he's a valuable enemy or ally. Um, but the troll is just do is just or was it goo? Uh, is just too stupid to get that. So he's just like smashing everything and that's it. Um, so yeah, well, I'm not sure if he will survive it. However, his uh, comrades, the other trolls, would be. I guess quite a valuable uh, thing to have another force in case of a fight, another troop. Why not? Um, so that's one thing we have here. Uh, he simply took them over. And um, as we've seen in the end of the episode, and he said it before in the throne room already, he tries to use them as a test for the village and for Lupus Regina as well. Um, I mean, just by power level, as far as I know, Lupus Regina should be able to handle the attack by herself, if she would want to. Um, so, if it is a snake, as example, I'm not sure. I mean, even if she cannot see through invisibility, um, being a werewolf, she can possibly smell the naga. So, the scent, she has this ability, I'm pretty sure. But I think it is more about um, that the village has to defend itself. They want to. I mean, we've seen it in the past. They tried to build up, um, well, not calling it an army, but a militia. Uh, they tried to build up good defenses and everything. And um, as we've seen, they would like to be able to defend themselves, to care about themselves. And only if it all goes down the drain, then they will go over to Lord Eins, which makes sense for both sides. I mean, it's the one thing that you have the self-respect, you know, you cannot run to the big dead all the time just because you have uh, just hit your toe or anything like that, you know. Um, you go there if there's something really important. So for your side, it's a matter of self-respect. For the side of Lord Eins, there's something um, there are two things. One thing is he cannot care about everything all the time. Um, it will take more time. It is just one village. What if he has multiple villages? As example, the Lizardman villages he has as well under his control. Um, what if he's outside doing something else? Sure, the play arts could help, but 
um, if they are if they are going to grow more and more, he they cannot tend for every little thing themselves. So that's the one thing where it would be good for him if they could be able to at least deflect minor attacks. The other thing is it would be good for him because right now he is very much of a puppet master. He really likes to control everything. He is um, like sitting above all of it, very often he really does by flying, and um, looking down on everything and he tries to move everything himself, to care about every problem himself, as we've seen in the last episode when he was in the city. Um, sure, he has the potential, the power and everything, um, but it is possibly a good thing if he is able to let some things go and let them be handled by his subordinates, by the play arts, um, by people like Demiok, as we know he does already in the Tomb of Nazarick, with many things, not all. Um, he still controls them, however. So it's a good thing if he's able to do that, but right now it is a matter of trust as well, um, because as we've seen for Lupus Regina, she was not really aware of what the village is meant to be. For her, it was more like, you know, an experimentation um, of, of a playing field. She herself told in the beginning um, there are many little things to play with. So for her, the humans are just, you know, on the one hand food and on the other hand um, just something to play and meddle with and then throw it away. Um, so he really has to make the play arts and everyone in the Tomb of Nazarick understand that um, it might be crucial to work together with at least some people or some parts of this world. So that's where he's going for and now he's doing a training for um, Lupus Regina. As we had for Cocytus as example, a training as well. So um, He's still studying and learning about his um, subordinates from Nazarick. Um, one by one and How they may have changed due to being in this world now That's one thing um, He got away with this potion problem um, Because she really got him there. I mean he gave out the red potion in the past with I think without really thinking much It was more like a, oh, stop whining here. You have a healing potion No, go you know because he wasn't aware that they are different from the ones they have there but um, confessing that he wasn't aware of that would have possibly meant that um, some might have said, oh, he doesn't know everything. So he's not all-knowing. Right now, For um, he's perceived by, I guess, more neither everyone in Nazarick as partially godlike. Um, so he is almighty powerful and he's all-knowing. Everything he does has a sense, has a purpose. He already knows things before you do know it. So that's the this uh, thing because they see their creators like that. We know that he isn't, that he's making mistakes, but until now he's really good at covering those up. And that they completely trust him, they believe him even this story later on. Because he isn't lying, why should he? He's all powerful, you know, that's the thing. So right now he once again got away. Um, well, we will see how long that goes. Um, the new potion we talked about already last time. Um, then we had the great scene with um, with this little dark elf girl. It was a bit weird because you know he was like checking her bone structure and everything. Um, I think it was a, maybe a very small amount of fan service for some people. But from uh, his viewpoint was completely without any inner um, thought about that. He was really about uh, so skinny, should eat more, um, thinking about uh, possibly they should go to school, which is um, if they are kids perceived by Dark Self, then sure. Although you have to question there, how long do you go to school? I mean, what else do they learn there? They are seven, she's 70. I mean, for human, that's close to or even after death. In this world, possibly after death. Um, so, if she would have gone to school from, let's say, 20 on, because they start later on, that would be 50 years of school. How much can you learn? I mean, we all know there's much to learn, but does it even make sense? 
and being as powerful as she is, I think she already knows a lot of things by herself. Not everything, but a lot. Um, but it's the interesting questions, are there Dark Elves in this world? We haven't seen yet, so maybe in the future. Um, and then, yeah, well, by just some small comments, and I don't know, I, I think he's still not completely aware of how effective he is on his subordinates. Um, so he is her new crush. I mean, he was possibly a little bit before, but uh, by answering to who do you love most, saying um, I love you too, something like that, you know, um, it's not a real answer to the question, but for her it was like, oh my god, when I'm grown up, I'm gonna marry him. Now we have number three. So this is going to be entertaining. We will see maybe um, in one of the future episodes um, one of the other two girls will find out and that will be possibly disastrous. I already see a little civil war in the tomb of Nazarick. Um, yeah, so I think that's, that's, as I said, there's not so much in this episode this time, so not so much to discuss about. He has some new subordinates I'm looking forward to if he will use them and how. Um, or if he will uh, turn them into undead, which in my opinion is already is still a waste. You can do that when they die normally, you know, later on. But we will see. He has a new weapon. I mean, there was pretty clear that he will not give this weapon back to the chieftain of the trolls. Which once again proves my theory that this one will possibly not survive. Um, so... I'm not sure this spell he put on them the last time, did it kill all of them? Um, because, I mean, the, the lights did go out in their eyes, so it might be they're really dead, but I thought it was more like of a suppression spell, like um, like the dominate effect we had in the past on Hamuske. But maybe I'm wrong, and they're really dead, and he did just an area of death effect there then, well. But Aura of Despair, I don't know, is it deadly? You can tell me if you want to. Um, if so, then we have new zombies and maybe skeletons. Um, so who will he give the weapon to is the interesting question. Um, he said it might be fitting for one in the village. So, I mean, there were not so many people there who are able to use effectively a weapon of this uh, magnitude. So it might be Britta, the red-haired girl. She is a skilled adventurer and warrior, so she might use it. Um, he might give it to um, the alchemist, although I'm not sure if that makes sense. It's not really his skill base. So the one in mind, possibly most um, logical, would be the leader of the village, the, the chieftain, the girl. But um, I really don't see her with a two-handed, over-huge sword, you know? But who am I to judge? So we will see. That's it for this time. I hope you liked, I did for sure, and uh, I will see you the next time. Until then, my name is Relax and Panic, goodbye, and out.